everyone. Welcome back to The Current, the quick response to news program from Jockey Club TE College, where we report on the latest issues, events, and culture. I'm Lucas. I'm Sarah. I'm Joy. I'm Tracy. I'm Henry. I'm Happy. I'm Adrian. I'm Sarah. I'm Sunny. I'm Ariel. I'm Justin. I'm Miss Lee. I'm Miss July. I'm Mr. Scott. Congratulations on making it through a full year of COVID. You are the class that survived the pandemic. That's amazing. That's unbelievable. That's reality. And you made it. Because of all the class suspensions and different seasons with different timetables. We at The Current were only able to bring you two full episodes this year. However, just in case you didn't know, we're very productive at various times of the year on Instagram, where we produce 21 current minis, our 60 second short, tiny news episodes, about current little news items and tidbits of interest to you, students of Hong Kong. If you haven't seen them, go take a look. They are on Instagram and our school YouTube channel. We talked about a number of super relevant topics, like how to do Zoom trips to the International Space Station, or go on a live safari together, about COVID cherries, changes at Ocean Park, exploding battery chargers, an ugly dragon claw on the hiking trails, a new trend in audio social media, giving ugly food to dogs, a top put into the rocks in Sai Kong. A hash brown shortage at McDonald's. Frozen grass on one of our coldest days. The best public toilet in Hong Kong. People poisoning dogs. The closing of Instagram Pier. The closing of UA Cinemas. People changing their names to get free sushi. Grenades on hiking trails. A temple in space. Two Hong Kong girls breaking new ground. Girl power. Vegetarian meat and the impossible burger. And the historic preservation of an underground reservoir. Our goal, of course, has been to keep you aware of topics that you might have missed that are relevant at this very moment. And hopefully get you talking about them in class and with each other. So, what is the final topic of the year? As you might have guessed, there are some things that we do not make episodes about. For example, you guys are hearing all about COVID all the time. And details about that huge topic that is overwhelming our daily lives are constantly changing. So we let that go in order to point to other things happening even in the midst of the pandemic. And that we can talk about these other issues to maybe give us a distraction. Because life goes on. We keep getting up every morning. Eating meals. Getting through the days. And going to bed at night. That is just the way it is. All around the world. Like in this next clip of kids playing on a trampoline in Israel while their neighborhood is being bombed. <laughs> Wow, that conflict in Israel between the Jewish and the Palestinian people is a huge current news item. But we try to stay as local as we can. So, what's the current issue that we're going to talk about today? One of the biggest items dominating news right now, as we all know, is vaccination hesitancy in Hong Kong. Which means people aren't willing to get vaccinated. It's controversial, but it's something we all need to think about. Take a look at this clip. Brian Tam wants nothing to do with the vaccine. The worst public health disaster in the last 100 years may still be raging. His business hit hard by pandemic restrictions, but the restaurant owner just won't take the COVID-19 jab. Hong Kong should be an easy vaccine success story. It secured 22.5 million doses from Sinovac, Pfizer-BioNTech and AstraZeneca, more than enough for a population of 7.5 million. An orderly rollout has been underway since late February, and it's free. But most people here are choosing not to get inoculated. As of mid-May, only 12% have been fully vaccinated, and experts say at least 70% need to be inoculated to reach herd immunity. Public health experts say one factor behind vaccine hesitancy is the low perceived risk of COVID-19, given the region's early containment success. Another is fear. Reports of a handful of deaths after vaccinations have spooked many, though experts have found no link between the deaths and the vaccine. I do uh, confess uh, we could do much better in terms of vaccination. We have enough supply. I said uh, we have administered two million doses, but we have another two million doses in our storeroom. Unused COVID-19 vaccines are also piling up in Japan due to red tape, poor planning and vaccine hesitancy. This vaccine hesitance is happening everywhere. It relating to how much that we trust the information we receive. 
As unused doses accumulate in Hong Kong, the government is rolling out incentives like a chance to visit bars and clubs until 2 a.m. for those who have taken the jab. But Lee is unwavering. Do you know what people in India would give to have access to a free COVID vaccine? In India, if you don't take the vaccine, you will die. But in Hong Kong, if you don't take it, you might not die. We are not at that point where we have to gamble. Again and again, health experts say until every city is safe from COVID, no city is safe. But that's not enough to sway these vaccine holdouts. There are many reasons for people to be hesitant about getting the vaccination. But we're not going to take a stand or force you to expose your beliefs in a classroom setting. You just need to talk to your parents about it and do what's right with them. Another aspect of these that is the supercurrent right now is that the government is doing whatever they can to get people to get a jab. These actions are called incentives or rewards that you can get if you get the jab. Vaccinated people can win an apartment. They can have shorter quarantine times after traveling. Your parents who are civil servants can have two days off. Vaccinated people can gather in larger groups in approved restaurants and bars and stay out later in the night. And there are many, many more things being offered. Is it enough to change minds? The same approach is happening all around the world. And in many places, it's working. $100 savings bond in West Virginia, a $10,000 scholarship in Lancaster, California, free beer in New Jersey, donuts from Krispy Kreme, Shake Shack fries in New York City. You just think of this when you think of vaccination. Mm. And a drink in Connecticut. In a push to encourage Americans to get their vaccine, governments and businesses across the country are thinking outside the box. Recently, Ohio Governor Mike DeWine capturing much national attention. For Ohio residents who get their shots, the state is offering something in return, a shot at winning $1 million. And the winner each Wednesday will receive one million dollars. And so far, state officials say the lottery has been a huge success. This has been very successful. This past Friday was our highest vaccine administration day in three weeks. Are any of those incentives enough for you? Now, know that not all teachers actually allow you to have discussion times in class after watching episodes of The Current like they are supposed to. So, right now, we're going to give you that time. That's right. We're going to let the camera roll and let you talk while we wait right here in front of you for one minute. What's the question that we want you to discuss? Without telling everyone what you believe, answer the question of do you think current incentives and rewards will be enough for most people? In particular, those who don't want to get shot to change their mind. Basically, will rewards from the government change people's minds to get vaccinated? You now have one minute to talk. Ready, set, go! Talk. Teachers, please help. Time's up. Did you have any discussion? Did anyone talk? We hope so. Now, for a final question. If you think people will still not get vaccinated even with rewards, what can be done to convince them to get jabbed? Or should the government just leave people alone? You decide. The question again is, what will make people change their minds to get vaccinated? Ready, set, go! Teacher, call some names if no one's talking. Go!
keep talking. Okay, good job. Well, that was different, right? That brings us to the end of the episode. We're trying to give you the time to talk during the episode. That brings us to the end of the school year. From everyone here at The Current, Thanks for watching and see you next year!